What's happening guys? Welcome back to my channel. I'm DJ Avionics and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make that intro scene that you saw at the very beginning of this video where we have a, an OBS uh, scene that says starting stream in with a countdown timer, background image, and even some background music. If you don't know already, um, this is used at the beginning of your stream when you've already pressed the start streaming button and you want a set amount of time, um, a countdown for your audience to see before you actually, or before your camera actually switches over to your main scene. So go ahead and go over to scene section and hit the plus sign to add. And let's give it a name. So let's, let's just call it starting soon countdown. Hit OK. All right, so now we're going to click the plus button or add button under sources. Let's choose an, a background image and we can just give it a name. I'm just going to leave it as image. Click OK. And now we're going to browse for our file. Background image right here. Click OK. All right, so there's our, our background image. Next, we're going to add our first uh, first text and let's go ahead and give this a name let's put um, streaming starting in this is just a name here we'll actually have the what we want appearing so starting or streaming starting in Okay, and here you can select a font. Right now it's to the Helvetica. So uh, here on the left side, all your different fonts. We're just going to leave it as is. There's quite a bit of a variety there. Um, let, let's go ahead and make this bold oblique. Is there italic? There is no. Okay, and then you always want to create um, your text in the largest size possible, which is 256. Reason being is you can downscale it without it having uh, having any problems as to the text pixelating. You never want to upscale something or make anything resize anything bigger because it will start to pixelate. So 256 is large enough to downscale and it won't have any problems as quality image quality. So click OK. There we go. Now we have a uh, bold oblique style. So click OK and we want to resize this now down. So click and drag on the uh, mixture, your source is selected and highlighted, and then click and drag the red frame corner that you see here, and then drag it into place where you want it. Right there, looks good enough for me. Click away, the red box goes away. Okay, now we're gonna create our next source, which is gonna be another text source. Now this is for your countdown timer, so let's just put timer name it as timer click OK and for timer I recommend using the impact font because it's nice and bold for the audience to to see here it is impact largest size possible click OK now we actually don't need to put any text here so go ahead and click OK so next you're going to, going to want to mouse over up here to tools go down to scripts and here, mine already shows the countdown uh, countdown script file over here in loaded scripts. But you want to, if it doesn't show up there, go ahead and click the plus button, and then there's your countdown timer file right there. So just click and select countdown, then hit open. But mine's already there, so I'm going to cancel. Once it shows up, go ahead and click on it, highlight it, and now here on the right it says description sets a text source to act as a countdown timer when the source is active. Thanks Jim for making this. So for for this tutorial we're just going to make it one minute and then um, here you can enter in however many minutes you can't enter in seconds and then so this one's just going to be one and then hit the drop down menu text source ours is timer so select timer and see it's already got the text and it's already counting down you don't have to put anything in final text um, because 
we're going to set this up so it automatically switches to our next scene. So go ahead and hit close. Now this is a little bit big, so I want to, I want to put this right in the circle. So I'm going to resize this. But before I resize it even further, we want to crop all the, we want to crop this to where um, just the first, this zero and then these show up. So while the uh, timer is selected down here, highlighted in blue, the red frame shows up. Go over to this left edge, the center transforms square or dot, and then hit the Alt or Option key on the keyboard. And while it's pressed down, drag that inside. So we're actually cropping our text. We just want that to show. So then we can go ahead and center this inside here. All right. So anytime you go to a different scene, click on a different scene over here and then click on your thing, it'll restart. That's a good thing to know if uh, you're not you're, you're not quite ready yet. All right. So now we want some audio playing in the background. So hit the plus button down here. We're going to add media source. And let's go ahead and name it back background audio. Hit OK. And then search for your file. There's the file I want. Hit open. Click OK. And now you see your background audio in the audio mixer. The reason you don't hear anything is, well, let's turn this down first. We don't want it to redline. So take the slider and drag it down to where it's barely in the yellow. There you go. Maybe a little bit lower. You don't want it too loud for our audience. If you click the sprocket wheel down here and then click advanced audio properties. Here you'll go to audio monitoring and right now it's a monitor off. So it's actually playing in the stream. We just don't hear it on our laptop or our computer. So if you click on this and click on monitor only, now we can hear our background audio. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn the monitor off. Hit close, it's still playing. And then, so when you click away and then click back on your scene, you have your image, your text, and your timer counting down and your background audio. When this is done counting down, you want it to automatically switch to your next scene. All right, so the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to Google something called Advanced Scene Switcher. I have the link down in the description. Once you have that downloaded, you'll unzip this file and then you'll double click into here. Uh, this, is, this is a Mac tutorial. There's a Windows, how did, uh, Windows folder here and the README text has instructions. But for, for this video, since we're on Mac, we're going to go ahead and click the uh, Mac OS folder. And here you'll have two files. Right now you see one because I already have it enabled. So here you'll have two files, Advanced Scene Switcher-Old and then Advanced Scene Switcher. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to open up your Applications folder. Go to OBS, right click, Show Package Contents, double click into Contents, double click into Plugins. If you are, um, so th this is OBS Studio 25. So th this this, fol uh, this file is for older um, OBS Studio versions, but since we are running um, version 25, we are gonna be using the other file, which is this one. This file was originally located over here. So we're basically, after you've unzipped the, uh, the advanced scene switcher folder, go into the Mac OS folder and then drag that one over here. And then that way we'll be able to see the plugin. And like I said, this is for 25, uh, 24, I wanna say version 24 and newer. These are for the older versions. So go ahead and close these out once you've dragged this in here into the plugins folder. Now you can go into tools and then you'll be able to see advanced scene switcher, not automatic scene switcher. If you don't see that yet, um, Close out OBS Studio, open it back up, and then it'll come back up. All right, so once you've dragged that file over into the Plugins folder, go to Tools in OBS, Advanced Scene Switcher. And here, 
a little overview of what you want to know. Basically, you just want to know the general tab, the stop start button. Okay. Right now it's uh, stopped. If we want to start it, just click start. We're going to stop it for now. Go over to scene sequence. Here is where we're going to set our rules. So basically when we want our starting soon countdown. So when starting soon countdown, here's a drop down menu. Okay, select it. Is active, switch to tutorial or whatever scene you want. After here we want to put, it's all in sections. So because our countdown timer is one minute, we want it to switch over exactly one minute later. So 60 seconds. And you can choose the cut or fade transition. Let's go ahead and choose fade. So hit the plus sign to add it into our rules. So here it says starting soon countdown is active. Switch to um, tutorial video after 60 seconds. So starting soon countdown, wait for 60 seconds, and then switch to tutorial using fade transition. And now you can actually save this as a file. So save round trips to file, give it a name, just name this tutorial, and then hit save, or uh, choose a location, hit save. So that way, if you have more, um, if you have several different setups for streaming sessions, like one you have a gaming one, or you have a DJ one, and you don't want to use the same scene switching rules, you can just simply save and load it up, look for your file, and it'll be loaded. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and click back to the general tab and we're gonna go ahead and hit the start button. So like it said, when, when this scene is active after 60 seconds, it's going to automatically switch to tutorial. So let's go ahead and speed this one minute up. For more information on the automatic scene switching, I have another video located right here in that corner, the top right corner. Go ahead and watch that video for more information on how to automatically scene switches in several different scenes. All right, so there we go. It automatically switched over after one minute. And there you have it, guys. That's pretty much how you make your countdown um, streaming soon scene with music, image, the actual timer, and incorporating the advanced scene switcher so it'll switch the next scene after your allotted time. As always, if my video tutorial helped you at all, I'd appreciate you hitting that like button. Leave any comments or questions down below and I'll get back to them ASAP. And please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring that notifications bell so you can be notified of future videos. Alright guys, I'm DJ Avionics. See you next time.